The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, welcome to the Divine Service this evening. Uh, please note that our communion hymn is an insert and in the front and back. There are lots of verses to it. This is a fantastic hymn. Uh, and you'll notice that it, our, uh, our hymnal doesn't have this hymn in it, but it does have two hymns that are this, that, that they took from this hymn. So this hymn has so many verses that they just said, oh, we're just going to use a couple of them. We're just going to sing it all together, uh, which is awesome. If I just assert that it's awesome, you will be. Also, there's a save the date sheet in there. Um, and, uh, and this is Saturday night at church. So I'm not too, too concerned uh, about it to be a pretty small group, uh, but I do have a little note in the bulletin which might which will be edited for next uh, week, but uh, just please, please be respectful of the people's space you know, during the flu season and with the COVID numbers being high, um, uh, so like with, with your sitting and things like that, and uh, not crowding uh, exits and, and, and such, so that people can get out and get out without walking through the crowd of people. Okay. The, the questions for the sermon, number one, uh, based on what will God judge you? Or rather, here's a better question. How do you know that you're going to go to heaven when, uh, when the final judgment comes? How do you know that you are going to go to heaven? And uh, the other question is, how do you serve Christ here on earth? How do you serve Christ here on earth? So those are the two questions for the sermon. Please turn your bulletins over and let us recite together the first article of the Apostles' Creed and its explanation. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me, for all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Thank you. Let us sing our first hymn.
the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. <coughs> our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sins.
O Lord, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of the end of all things, and the day of your just judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here, and dwell with you forever hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Daniel chapter 7. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and his wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I looked then, because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking, and as I looked, the beast was killed, and its body destroyed, and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away. Their lives will prolong for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He shall call to the heavens from above, and to the earth that he may judge his people, that the heavens declare his righteousness. For God himself is judge. The epistle lesson is from 2 Peter chapter 3. Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires, they will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlooked this fact, that the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water, and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you not wishing that any should perish, that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a roar. The heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. The earth and the works that are done in, on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? Wait, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to this promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, 
Since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
a kingdom for you. That is what grace is. It is a gift of God, not of your works. You inherit the kingdom, eternal life, by grace. This is exactly what St. Paul says in the, in the Spirit in Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. So here scripture states that God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. That he adopted us as sons through Christ. And that we are redeemed through the forgiving blood of Jesus. So before the foundation of the world, before God said, let there be light, he chose us in Christ Jesus. He planned our full salvation to forgive our sins through Jesus' death and resurrection and to make us his children through faith in Christ so that we might inherit our Father's kingdom. This is grace. And to those on the left, the king says, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Notice that the king did not say, Prepared for you, like he did with the kingdom, when he said, Come into the kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. No, here he says, uh, he says, prepared for the devil and his angels. The eternal fire was not prepared for mankind. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. This shows that God does not desire our damnation. Scripture says that God desires all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And we heard it in our epistle lesson that God does not desire anyone to perish, but that all might reach repentance. No one can blame, can blame God for his own unbelief and damnation. Those who are damned can only blame themselves, while those who are saved can only give credit to God. Why some are then saved and others are not is a mystery that God has not revealed to us. What God has revealed to us is that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ apart from our works. Yet, the large chunk of our gospel lesson does not simply speak of grace, although it's a very important part of it, but of the wonderful works of mercy the sheep on the right have done for their Lord. <laughs> I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came. These are indeed marvelous works, which God will praise for all eternity. Yet they are not the works which save us. Rather, they are the fruits of saving faith. It is as Scripture says in Ephesians 2, verse 10, after it says that well-known verse, for by grace you have been saved through faith, this is not going to do it, it is a gift of God, uh, let's say that uh, we should boast. He goes on to say, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared before him, that we should walk in them. These works are real. They are fruits of faith. And Christ Jesus will reveal them on the last day. It is much like that parable 
which Jesus tells in Matthew 13, we have a master who, who sows good seed, and then at night an enemy comes and sows bad seed. So the workers say, Master, didn't you sow good seed? Look at these, look at these uh, weeds, this darling. And they ask if they should tear it up. He says, no, 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 just, just leave it there until the harvest. Now the darnel looks like wheat at first. So if you try to pull it up, you might start pulling up the wheat, the, the wheat along with it. But when the ear appears, it becomes very distinct, easily distinguishable from the wheat. So at the harvest, the laborer binds up the darnel and burns it and gathers up the wheat into the barn, which of course represents heaven. The wheat is good because it came from the good seed, but it is its fruit which reveals itself. But there is another detail that you must notice. The sheep on the right are ignorant of their good works. When did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and cold you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? That we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. is an article of faith. We believe it even when we do not see it. This is kind of like how we confess that we believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We, we believe that the church is united, that it is one and holy. Because the scripture clearly teaches that there is one holy Christian Church, sure, without blemish. Yet, that's not what we see. But there are many who operate under the assumption that we must be able to see the church as united in order for it to be so. So, the Roman Catholic Church has historically claimed to be the holy Christian church on earth and has solidif uh, solidified its unity by submission of the Pope. Of course, the Roman Church is not united, but has factions and divisions. And of course, the greatest scandal of the Roman Church is that they teach that you are justified both by faith and by your works, instead of saying that you are justified by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone, which is what the Bible teaches. And the Protestant Church has operated similarly. Although there are many factions among Protestants, there has been a, a continued effort to unite the Protestants under one Protestant church. But to do this, since Protestants don't agree on anything, they have to insist that they compromise on important, uh, on important te uh, teachings, such as election, baptism, the Lord's Supper, and absolution. So instead of building a church on the teaching of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus being the cornerstone, which is what the scripture teaches, they, uh, they, they have a church that depends on not listening to the apostles and Jesus. Uh, and and they, they just narrow it down to one fine earth. And so it is also for those who try to see here and now their works which will be revealed and praised by Jesus on the last day. They try to earn God's praise with their own works that they can see and tap it. So when Christ says to them that they did not feed him or clothe him or visit him, they're shocked and say, When did we see you in need and not minister to you? They tried to see what you ought to believe through faith. Just as we do not see the one holy Christian and apostolic church on earth with our eyes, but rather a divided church with scandal, and yet we still believe that Christ's church is nevertheless united and holy, and, we, and can be found where Christ's word is purely taught and his sacraments are rightly administered. So also we don't see our works with the splendor that Christ does. None of us have actually seen Jesus with his nail-pierced uh, hands and feet 
sitting in our kitchen eating food that we've set before him? Or have we visited him in the hospital or in prison? Our work seemed in insignificant and imperfect. And yet we believe that they are pleasing to God for Christ's sake. <coughs> Christ tells the sheep, as much as you have done it to the least of these, my brothers, you have done it to me. With these words, Jesus identifies himself with every Christian and with his ministers. Jesus tells his disciples that whoever receives them receives him. And that whoever gives one of his disciples a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, will by no means lose his reward. Jesus intends for Christians to show mercy to one another and to look after their needs. When you see your fellow Christian hungry, feed them. Thirsty, give them something to drink. Jesus also indicates with these words that Christians will likely suffer for being Christians. And so, they might be made or in prison. So we should watch and see if our brothers and sisters are suffering persecution for the faith and defend them and support them in any way we can. And that might just simply be with your words to defend if you're a Christian who's mocked, your Christian brother and sister who's being mocked in the faith. Christians also serve Christ by serving Christ's ministry. St. Paul writes, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. The scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads the grain, and the labor is, uh, deserves wages. So when Christians support the preaching of the word by taking care of the pastors, Christ says that they are caring for Christ himself. As you did not do it, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me, says Jesus to those on the left. It is true that without faith, uh, it's impossible to please God. So even if the world thinks that you, your works are splendid and noble, they don't please God if they're not done without faith. So all the works these goats would have presented to Christ are worthless in his sight. And yet it's not just that they didn't do these works of faith. These unbelievers didn't do them at all. Why? Why do I say that? Because they separated themselves from the body of Christ. If you do not have fellowship with the least of Jesus' brothers and sisters, then you will not be showing mercy to them, will you? Jesus' words are an indictment against those who separate themselves from the church on earth by neglecting the preaching of his word and neglect receiving his sacraments and by neglecting to show love to Christ's sheep. If Christ is going to be your savior, he must be your brother. And if Christ is your brother, then you must be a brother or sister to his brethren as well. Judgment Day is real. This is no fairy tale. Jesus will judge, and some will go to heaven, and some will go to hell. How do you know whether you will go to heaven or hell? Through faith in Jesus. You are saved by grace as a gift that is received through faith in Jesus Christ, and not by your works. Yet works always follow faith. Those who love Christ gather to hear his word, and they love their brothers and sisters in Christ. And as much as they do for their fellow sheep, they do for their dear Lord Jesus who has rescued them from all sin, from death, and hell. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us love one another, and in so doing, show love to our dear Savior Jesus. Amen.
please God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. <laughs>
grant us the blessing of departure from this world and on the last day of resurrection to your glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Take me, it says, to body of Christ, given to death for you. Take me, it says, to body of Christ, given to death for you. Take me, it says, to body of Christ, given to death for you. Take a drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take a drink, this is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take a drink, this is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take a drink, this is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. God bless you, Maria, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Faith, life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Take heed, this is the true body of Christ given to death for you. Take heed, this is the 